Adidas tells us that the new SL20 is a lightweight running shoe intended for racing and fast paced running. And in many respects, that's exactly what this shoe is all about. But there's so much about this shoe that's very confusing that I think the best way to understand it is to first let this shoe speak for itself. Ten point one seven miles total for the day, about eight minutes forty seconds per mile, and about one hundred forty beats per minute. For the most part, it was an easy run that I split into two parts. The first part was two point two three miles that I ran in honor of Ahmad Arbery, who died one year ago today, or at least from the day that this running footage was shot. And the rest of the run was the remainder of my run for today. That was uh, mostly easy miles with some strides thrown in there, which I thought would be a good opportunity to let me try out the new SL20 at a variety of paces. But before I give you my thoughts on this shoe, after just this first run, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased with my own money. No one sent it to me or is paying me to make this video. No one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the new SL20. Now, because this shoe kind of has a very quirky, weird history, I think the best way for me to kind of explain it is to first talk about this shoe by itself then I'll talk about it in context with other Adidas shoes and the previous version of the shoe, which is where this shoe starts to get really confusing. But first, let's talk about this shoe. This shoe is an all a light strike midsole foam shoe with 21.5 millimeters of stack height in the heel and a 9.5 millimeter drop, giving 12 millimeters of light strike foam in the forefoot. Unlike a lot of other Adidas shoes, there's no torsion bar, there's no LEP system. It's just pure light strike midsole foam. On the outsole, we've got continental rubber in a new pattern for the shoe this year, much more updated in terms of what we're going to be seeing in, I think, future shoes coming in 2021 from Adidas. But it also kind of reminds me a little bit of the outsole pattern on the Adazero Pro. Up top, what we have is a dual layer mesh with some underlays, not overlays, but underlays underneath to give a little bit more structure and support in the toe box area to keep things from getting a little bit too floppy. And then what is pretty much a standard kind of understated upper from kind of the midfoot cage all the way to the back. The heel has a pretty big heel counter back here and it ends in kind of this Achilles design, which it looks like a lot like the same design that we saw in the Adazero Pro and the Adios Pro itself. This just has just a touch more padding on it. For the tongue, very similar to its predecessor version one of the SL20, we have a tongue that looks like it's lifted straight off of an Adidas soccer cleat. Overall, the fit seems to fit true to size and is actually a little bit different from a lot of the Adidas shoes that I've been trying lately, which all feel just a touch long in the shoe, even though the width and the toe box overall seem to be right. This one doesn't seem to have that kind of recently characteristic longness to the shoe. It actually just seems to fit just right. This entire package comes in at a weight of 8.8 .8 ounces. So when I took it out on the roads for today, things were pretty icy at spots because everything's starting to melt right now in Chicago and overnight, a lot of that melt freezes back over. And so you've got a lot of kind of black ice spots and then some spots that are very clear and then some spots that are just kind of muddy and dirty and just kind of damp. And the outsole grip on the new SL20 was absolutely fantastic to run in. Sure, there were definitely still parts that were very sketchy in terms of grip, but that's to be expected when you're looking at just like a blank sheet of ice that's over the flat blacktop that's on the lakefront trail. But overall, definitely a nice and grippy, almost tacky kind of shoe. Love what's going on in the outsole. In the midsole, we've got a bunch of that light strike midsole foam here. And I think with the combination of what they've done with the outsole and the midsole here, this one seems to be much more of a versatile setup 
in terms of the midsole outsole combination here. Last year with the SL20 version one, I felt like it was a really great tempo day shoe. Really likes being at that threshold kind of pace but it didn't really like being at your easy pace or some of those recovery paces. It just wasn't as comfortable. The light track felt a little bit blocky and a little bit kind of harsh underfoot. It still kind of has that for this shoe in the new SL20 or the SL20 version two, but it's a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit more forgiving in the heel, it seems, uh, when you're running at some of your easy paces. So it's a shoe that I definitely feel like I can re recommend to a broader range of people for a broader range of activities although definitely still the sweet spot for this light strike shoe the new sl20 is for when you are picking up the pace when you do you start to feel like a, just a different dynamic where you're hitting the ground when you pick up the pace you're hitting the ground a little bit harder you're pushing off the ground a little bit harder there's just more force getting pushed into the shoe and the way that the light strike responds is by absorbing that impact and then springing right back and giving you back what you're putting into it. And the way that the light strike does it is just really nice. It really starts to come alive. It becomes much more dynamic. I felt like there was a real spring to the step every time that I was putting my foot down in the SL20. This is definitely a really great fast day shoe. Threshold paces, even faster than that. 10K pace, 5K pace. Today I was doing strides and I was closer towards my mile pace or mile effort. And those speeds, it's just fantastic to get up on the toes and really keep moving. I think the ideal distances for this shoe would probably be like half marathon or shorter, just because the light strike isn't the softest, most forgiving of foams. I'm not sure that I would want it for say like anything longer than 15 to 20 miles. I don't know that I would want to race a marathon it, but anything that you're going to be doing in terms of your fast training, this is going to be a really fun shoe to be able to do that training. In. The upper is generally pretty unremarkable as far as any fancy technologies and even design. It's much more muted than the SL20 version one that came before it. It's just a much more muted design that we're seeing here. The heel collar here is like the only place that's giving me kind of not issue, but something that I've noticed that I don't like just absolutely love or that is actually like registering on my radar of things that I'm noticing. I think that this heel cup does come up a little bit too high. And what I noticed because of that is that this heel cup is coming up and over my heel a little bit more than I notice in a lot of other shoes. Now I'm assuming the reason they're doing that is so that way you get a really secure sense of lockdown when you put on this shoe. But I think it's almost a little bit too much for me because what it then does is then these two kind of like points that come up here that are supposed to kind of like uh, run parallel along the Achilles, that kind of ends up kind of pushing a little bit further into the Achilles than I would like. It wasn't uncomfortable for me, but it was something that I noticed. For those of you who have been liking shoes with Achilles flares, because you like it when the shoe comes away from that Achilles, this might be something that you notice, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem for most people. Now this shoe came out initially, I think October maybe, or November of last year in 2020. And so it's been a while since it's been out. Already the shoe is marked down quite a bit. I was able to get this shoe around $80. And I think now it's on sale for even a little bit more. Plus there's promo codes you can add on top of that right now, at least as of the time of this filming, that you could probably get this shoe under $80 maybe even a lot cheaper than $80 in the United States, making this shoe an absolute fantastic value and a very easy pickup in my mind in terms of whether or not this is something that you can add to your rotation. If you like the SL20 version one and you're ready for another SL20, I think that there are still other SL20 version ones still floating around there. So as long as you're not too particular about which design or which color you're getting, you can definitely still get the SL20 version one and then pick up the SL20 version two later on. You might not be able to get the exact color that you want, but I think there's gonna be a lot of inventory of this shoe still lying around. Now, with all that being said about the SL20, at least the new version, let's talk about some of the confusing stuff because I just feel like you can't make an SL20 video without addressing some of the weirdness about this shoe. So I mentioned earlier that the SL20 version one came out last year, which seems like a, a really long time ago. But it was unique on a couple of reasons because it was a brand new shoe, and I believe it was like the first shoe with light strike that you get, at least in the US. And it was an all light strike foam 
shoe. So it was really exciting because it was a chance for us to experience what Light Strike was because believe it or not, Light Strike only came out like a year ago from Adidas. It seems like it's been around for a while already, but it's, a, it's still a pretty new foam for Adidas. And when it came out, the design was stunning. It was kind of weird. I instantly fell in love with the shoe and it was super fun to run in. An excellent speed day shoe and just very exciting. All around, it was just something unexpected from Adidas. The, where it got confusing is that they had this excellent shoe that very quickly got deep discounted. Now the full list price of the shoe, I think originally was like 120. That got marked down very quickly. And then I thought, well, maybe there weren't that many or it's not selling well. Maybe I'm the only one that likes it. And so they're gonna try to get rid of it and just dump the inventory. I started seeing them show up in some of the other online retailers. And then people would tell me that they're finding them at like the TJ Maxx, the Marshalls, the places where you can find like, like the overstock of shoes. They were finding them for $60, $50. Some people were getting them for like $30 for this excellent pair of shoes. And it was just absolutely bizarre. And I thought certainly at that point, they must be like done with their inventory and that's just the end of the SL20. Maybe it was just a short run experiment and they did it and then they're done with it. But then they started releasing new colors of the SL20. And then those new colors also got very quickly discounted. And then those new colors then from being discounted went to some of the like overstock liquidators or the overstock retailers. So it was a weird process that they kept repeating. Mark down the shoes, dump the inventory, and then create new inventory, mark it down, and then dump it. It got to the point where they did that so many times that they came up with this version, the new SL20, in the same year as the first SL20. So we had two versions of the same shoe in the same year. And here's the other parts that it just gets even weirder. So we got a new version of the SL20. The upper is different. The midsole stack height is different. The weights are different. The outsole pattern, very different. But they didn't call it the SL20 version 2. They didn't call it the new SL20. They're continuing to just call it the SL20. And they could have easily called it the SL21, maybe, or the SL20 version 2, or the SL20.2, or the new SL20. But instead, it's just the SL20. And I just don't understand it. And again, this SL20 is getting really quickly marked down and seems to be like they're just trying to churn through all this inventory. I don't understand it, but as confused as I am in terms of what Adidas is doing with this shoe, I gotta say, I shouldn't complain because all this means is that this fantastic shoe that is already being sold at a very aggressive, a very fair price is getting to be put on people's feet at a tremendous discount. So if anything, I shouldn't be complaining except for the fact that it's a total head scratcher. I should be celebrating the fact that in an age where shoes are getting more and more and more expensive, the SL20 is delivering a, just a tremendous amount of value. So those are my thoughts on the new SL20 or the SL20 version two or the SL21, whatever we're gonna call it, this one. Those are my thoughts on this one after just the first run. Let me know in the comments if you have any other additional questions. I'd love to talk to you guys about it there. Or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream I do just about every day on YouTube, 3 p.m. Central Time. We can always talk about anything shoe-related or sometimes even, or usually, not shoe-related at the live stream. So hopefully I'll see you there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?